Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do something a little bit different and talk about my next big venture in writing a book and what I've learned so far while writing this book. For those of you that don't know or are new here, I've been involved in the Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire community for about three or four years here now on YouTube, as well as other TV shows, starting to do reactions, etc. And a little bit of comedy as well, some comedy skits I've been doing recently, as well as being a Twitch streamer and a podcaster as well. All those links will be in the description below. But on top of all that, I am now writing a book. Now, some of you already know this. I mentioned this several months ago when I started to think about this and started this actual process. But I wanted to somehow incorporate what I'm doing with the book, how it's coming along, and what I've learned so far on the channel. So I figured I would give you, as a new writer, my top five things I've learned so far while writing. Now, I will say right up front, I am very much a beginner. I am no expert. So this is going to be more of a you know, maybe a weekly or bi-weekly thing where I talk about what I've learned so far, how far I've gotten, how things are progressing, etc., and a few tips and tricks to help anybody out there who's thinking about writing a book. I think it's very important to not only, you know, look up resources and from people and experts who have been through the process and have done it for a long time, but reach out to fellow creators and writers, etc., who are going through the process themselves for the first time and share our experiences. I do have one chapter published in a book that I co-wrote with several other great authors here on YouTube, some friends of mine, as well as professionals as well, on how Game of Thrones changed pop culture. Now again, it's only one chapter in that entire book. It's called The Thrones Effect. And by the way, that book is now available on Amazon on paperback, the Kindle version, as well as the Audible version. So I will leave a link to that in the description below. So just for full disclosure, I have went through the process of working with a publisher, and again, for one chapter only, but this was a more of a nonfiction, how Game of Thrones changed pop culture, changed the landscape, etc., and more of a collaborative effort. So it's nothing like what I'm doing right now, trying to dive in the world of writing my first novel. And I will say really quickly, just for a little bit of backstory, I am working on a fantasy novel, and I guess this will be labeled epic fantasy, just in the sense of the sheer size of the world I'll be working in, but more low fantasy in the sense of it is a more recognizable world similar to our own with just a touch of magic where the same laws of physics and all that apply. So in that sense, it is low fantasy, but nevertheless, this is in the fantasy genre, something I'm really passionate about and something I'm getting more and more excited about as I get further along in this process of writing my first book. So far, I have about 20,000 words written. I have seven full chapters. So with all that said, all that laid out there, just for a little backstory, I didn't mean to bore you with all that. Here are my first few tips I've learned so far on my short journey of writing my first fantasy novel. Tip number one, just start writing. I know, I know, you've heard it before. You've probably seen it on a few other videos that you've already watched if you're watching this one. Just start writing and get the story out of your head onto paper or a word processor. The bottom line is you got to get this story out of your head and onto paper and start somewhere. And as you will see, once you start writing and you start getting into a paragraph or two, that'll start getting other ideas flowing in your head and you'll see more and more flow out of you onto the paper. And again, I'm using the word paper loosely. Obviously, this is the modern world. Most of us are typing on our laptops or a word processor or whatever, but you get the idea. Just get it out of your head. You'll see that your creativity actually increases once you start actually getting out on paper and you start seeing the words pile up. It also gives you confidence to see that there are some paragraphs starting to form as opposed to sitting there with a blank page and wondering where the hell do I start. Now with that said, I won't get too much into outlines here. Some people prefer really detailed outlines and some people are more of the Gardner variety as far as writers. They have kind of a general idea and they just kind of start writing and see where the story takes them. So whatever your preference, either way, just start writing. For me, for example, I don't have a detailed outline. I have some major plot points in the general outline, but I'm more of the Gardner type, I guess, where I have a little bit planned out. I know kind of where I'm heading in general. I know some major character arcs, some major twists, and the ending in general, for example, but I don't have a really detailed outline, just kind of a rough outline of where I'm heading, just to kind of guide me as I go. Either way, just start writing. I promise you, once you start, You'll see more and more sentences start to develop into paragraphs and more paragraphs. And before you know it, you may have a chapter or two written, and that gives you all the confidence you need in the world to keep going. Number two, while you're doing this writing, turn off your internal editor. If you're like me, you're a perfectionist, you want every line to be perfect. That is a completely different stage in this process. Just get it out on paper. Don't worry about things being the perfect sentence structure or the perfect wording or whatever. Turn off your editor and go back and do that at a different time. For example, I have seven complete chapters written. I have probably revised them probably now 
five or six times each at least, if not more. And every time I go to start another chapter, I reread those first to kind of get myself back in the mood, back in the world, for example. And I will kind of touch up things as I go through those rereads. So again, as you start and you keep writing and you're just kind of getting the story out of your head, as I mentioned in tip number one, don't worry about editing so much. Just get it out on paper. Get the basic story out there. You're going to be revising things a million times, I promise. Plus, as you add things later on in the story, you will go back and change things to foreshadow them and add hints and clues in previous chapters anyway. And on top of that, you'll likely have an editor of some type anyway, whether you're trying to self-publish later on or go through a traditional publishing house. You're going to have other people check out what you're doing. You're going to get a lot of feedback, do a lot of editing yourself. And again, on top of that, you will have an editor to do that. So again, just let go of the perfectionism while you're getting the main story, the main gist of the story out on paper. And tip number three, this is another very common tip I know, so I apologize, but it has to be said again, just do it. Find some time to do something every single day, even if it's just a couple words or like I mentioned, going back and revising a previous paragraph or chapter or whatever it may be, find something that moves your story forward every day, that moves your process forward, something that makes that percentage of being 100% done tick up a little bit no matter what it is. So for example, I will go a few days where I don't have time to write because I'm doing all these other things. I'm making YouTube videos, I'm streaming, I'm reacting to TV shows, I'm recording a podcast, I'm recording this video right here. But at the very least, I will jot down some ideas or I will go back and reread something and revise and edit something, which again goes back to my previous point about not editing while you actually write. Go back and do that other days when you don't have time to write any new material. That way you see it with a fresh set of eyes and you will start to catch all these little things and that's when you can do some type of editing or revisions on previous chapters. Or it also goes into my next tip, number four, get organized. You can take some time some days to get more organized with your notes. You know, you may scribble down notes on a piece of paper over here, cards over here, a napkin somewhere in a restaurant, whatever, when you have an idea. And I'll give you a few examples that's helped me so far when I say get organized and write down your thoughts. For example, I have a pack of three by five index cards that I keep laying around. I can keep them with me. I can put them in the car. So if I have an idea somewhere, I can just write down the idea on the card or whatever. And then when I come back home, I can organize it in my actual notes. What I use to actually write right now, I'm just using Microsoft Word. And I also use Microsoft OneNote to organize all this into one place. For example, in my OneNote document so far, I have tabs that list cities, locations, characters, animals in this world, the different flora around different regions of the world, and about anything else you can think of I have tabs for where I combine all this into one location. So while I'm writing, for example, when I come up with a new location, I will actually put that in bold and then I'll go add it to my OneNote document under locations or cities or towns or villages, whatever it may be. And then I will also add it to my map. I'll pinpoint it on my map. I have a couple of different maps I've drawn out so far on sketch pads. Now, I will be moving in a couple months while I have a proper studio to do all this to be more organized. And I will be getting a big double-sided whiteboard so I can quickly point out places on my map, write down ideas as I'm walking by, add things, change things, etc. But for now, I just have a big sketch pad and I'll actually plot that spot on the map when I come up with it in the story and I'll highlight it in bold. And once I go back to kind of revise or edit things, which again is a different day or a different time for when I'm actually writing them, anything in bold, I know to go add to my OneNote document so I can keep all this stuff together in one place, one location and not keep it all in my head and go insane. A couple other things I'll add as far as, you know, writing down your ideas. The worst thing you can do is have an idea and try to go to sleep and wake up and remember it. Never gonna happen, or not very often anyway. So definitely carry around note cards, use an app on your phone to type in notes, use your voice recorder on your phone. I've done that before in the car. I was actually driving down the road, had a great idea I thought would be for a character and kind of a backstory that kind of would be uh, very important to the main story. And so instead of obviously, you know, typing and driving, I just turned on my voice recorder on my phone and set it down right there on my dashboard and basically just spoke to myself recording it on my phone. I guess it doesn't look too weird these days. Everybody's on their phones in their car. Everybody has some kind of, you know, hands-free phone device, whatever, through your car. Anyway, the important part was that I got the whole idea out of my head so I would remember it. And then when I got home, I turned that into actual words on paper. And then again, organized everything in my OneNote file. So keep everything in one place and just get it out of your head because you will forget it. And I would say my last tip for this video and what I've learned so far while going through this process is don't overthink marketing and websites and all that kind of stuff as far as marketing your book because it's not even a book yet. 
just focus on the book itself. Once you get to a point to where you know you're going to finish, you know you have so many words, you know you're to a point where this will be an actual story that you finish some way, shape, or form, then you can start looking at that type of things. Now, of course, you can anytime you want, but I'm just saying as far as focusing on all that stuff and not actually having a product even close to being ready, I would say focus more on the story. I've heard a lot of uh, different tips and tricks from people and a lot say start marketing now, you need to start marketing beforehand. And that may be true to an extent, but that was before I even had a single word on a page. So now that I have 20,000 words in, seven chapters in, I'm guessing I'm going to have around 120,000 words in the first book. Yeah, I said first book, this may end up being a trilogy. Not really sure yet, but that's what I'm saying. I don't really know what I have yet, so I'm not gonna to focus too much quite yet on getting an author's website up or trying to you know, put it out on social media and whatever. Now, once I get a little closer, I'll start looking into more of that. And there's nothing wrong with looking into it, believe me. I've already looked into stuff like that. I've had people tell me what I should and shouldn't do, etc. as far as websites and all that stuff. And for example, this right here being a YouTube video is kind of a form of marketing if you think about it. I'm doing it from a different perspective just to give you tips and tricks on what I've learned so far as a new writer myself. But at the same time, with a current YouTube audience, this is a form of marketing. So that's great, but not everybody has a built-in audience like that to where you can kind of announce what you're doing and uh, get people looking forward to it, etc. So just focus on the book at first, get that going. And once you get so far in, again, where you kind of know that you're going to finish this project, then you can start looking into marketing, get more serious about you know maybe starting a website and getting in touch with people to help market your actual book. I will stop now and let you guys go about your day. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you writing a book? Are you interested in writing a book? What tips and tricks do you have for new writers? And be sure to add any tips of your own as well and add to what I've said already. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, I actually have released a first, well, probably a second or third draft of my actual prologue because I do want some feedback. So I'm using my Patreon platform to get real honest feedback about what they think, what needs to be improved, does it hook them or whatever. So be sure to get feedback as well. That's another quick little tip, obviously. But yeah, I will be doing that as well and releasing more information on Patreon as well. So be sure to check that out as well. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell twice so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.